Hello and welcome to our first lesson on Avogadro's constant and looking specifically at the basics of what is a mole and what information can you get from moles and Avogadro's constant. Let's go. For a lot of people, the concept of moles is quite confusing, but it really boils down to it's just a word that means a specific number. So, for example, if I said to you how many items are in a pair, hopefully you would recognise that the word pair means two. So here's two shoes, a pair of shoes. If I said to you how many items are in a dozen, if I wanted a dozen eggs, you would recognise the word dozen as meaning 12. If I said to you, um, I'm going to watch a trilogy at the cinema, you would hopefully recognise that I was looking to watch three films in a row. Awesome trilogy, you should watch it. And if I said to you, I'll give you a grand, uh, you would be looking hopefully for £1,000. So these words, pair, dozen, trilogy, ground, they just um, are evocative of a certain number, aren't they? they? They mean a certain number to us all. And mole is exactly the same. So how many items in a mole? Well, this many. A lot. And so we shorten it. It's a standard form. And this is the number that you'd need to recognise and be using in your exam. 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Now, the guy who came up with this number was a guy named Avogadro, which is why we call it Avogadro's number. Or sometimes you hear it as Avogadro's constant because it is that this number is constant. One mole, 6.02 times 10 to 23, that never changes. It is a constant. Now, where you will get muddled up is recognising that this item could mean the number of atoms. So the number of atoms in a mole. And you would say the 6.02 times 23 atoms in a mole of iron, for example. However, it could also mean the number of molecules. So if I think of something like water, H2O, um, let's go for something easy. Let's go for chlorine, so diatomic, Cl2. Uh, something that looks like this. And I say, well, OK, how many molecules do I have in one mole of chlorine gas? So Cl2. And I would say I have 6.02 times 10 to 23 molecules of chlorine, recognising that there's two atoms per molecule. So be careful of the language, because if I was asked how many atoms there were in the chlorine, I would have to double this number because I've got two atoms per molecule. If you're a bit lost, don't worry, we'll look at it in the questions. And again, let's look at water, something like this. Now, this molecule um, has three atoms, so 6.02 times 10 to 23 molecules. But how many atoms in that number, in one mole, well, you would multiply that number by three to figure out how many atoms you have, because you have three atoms per molecule. Are we confused yet? Hopefully not. Let's give some uh, ideas a go. So what are the core concepts we need to remember at this point? Well, what is a mole? A mole is, first of all, it's this number, 0 point, sorry, 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms or 6.02 times 10 to the 23 molecules. Second of all, a mole is Avogadro's number or Avogadro's constant. OK, and note that number is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. OK, so let's use this con core concept to answer some questions. OK, so let's use these core concepts then to have a go at some questions. May I suggest you pause the video, have a go yourself and then check the answers. It's much more productive than just copying down the answers afterwards. OK, so number one, how many atoms in one mole of carbon? If I look at my core concept, it says a mole or one mole is 0 point, sorry, 6.02 times 10 to 23 atoms. So I have my number there. Number two, how many atoms in 2.5 moles of carbon? Well, if I know one mole of carbon is 6.02 times 10 to the 23, I can simply multiply that number by 2.5 to get the answer of 1.505 times 10 to 24. If you didn't get the answer because you're struggling to use your calculator correctly, may I suggest you take the time now, just pause, figure out how, that, how to get the answer. Now you know what answer you're looking for. Figure out what to use, what buttons to press until you get the answer and then use that 
um, moving forward. Okay, so number three, how many atoms in 0.5 moles of carbon? So exactly the same again, guys. You just simply take in Avogadro's number and multiplying it by 0.5 to get 3.01 times 10 to the 23. Notice that number is half the original amount because it's 0.5. So how many atoms in 0.25 moles of carbon? So that's a quarter of what we'd normally have in one mole. You simply times it by 0.25 to get 1.505 times 10 to the 23. Does that make logical sense? Yes, that's about one quarter of what I'd expect. OK, number five, how many atoms in 0.025 moles of carbon? Well, again, you're going to take that number, multiply it by 0.025 and get the answer 1.505 times 10 to the 22. OK, question six, slightly different. Look at the word in how many molecules in one mole of hydrogen? Well, again, I'm a bit struggling here, so I'm going to look at those core concepts. A mole is 6.02 times 10 to 23 atoms. Or molecules oh it's the same number 6.02 times 10 to the 23 number seven how many atoms in one mole of hydrogen hang on a minute is that not the question we had before no it's not last time number six it said how many molecules and now it's asking how many atoms so what do we do here so we remember hydrogen always appears as h2 it's diatomic and so we know that we've got 6.02 times 10 to 23 molecules. Each of those molecules has two atoms. And so 6.02 times 10 to 23 times 2, giving you a total of 1.204 times 10 to the 24. How did you do? OK, let's take this concept a little bit further. On the left hand side here, I have a picture of one mole of hydrogen atoms. And I want you to imagine that in that pile of atoms, I have exactly 6.02 times 10 to 23 atoms of hydrogen, one mole of hydrogen. In the middle, I have again one mole of this time lithium, still got 6.02 times 10 to 23 atoms, but the pile is bigger. Why is the pile bigger? Well, lithium atoms are bigger than hydrogen atoms. So my power will be bigger because each of the atoms is slightly bigger and that's going to add up, isn't it? What about uh, right hand side? Again, I've got one mole of carbon here. It's still got 6.02 times 10 to 23 atoms of carbon. But carbon compared to hydrogen is, is 12 times as big. It's massive. Um, and obviously, carbon is not even massive compared to the rest of the elements. But it's a bigger pile, again, because each of those carbon atoms is significantly bigger than the hydrogen atom. So even though each of those piles represents one mole, the mole pile or the pile of particles is different. The size is different because each of the atoms is different size. What do you think would happen to the mass then? If I was, to a, if I was able to measure the mass of each of these piles of atoms, well, Avogadro recognised something just mind-blowingly amazing. He recognised that 6.02 times 10 to the 23 hydrogen atoms had a, a mass of 1.008 grams. And when he compared it to what else he knew about hydrogen, he recognised that, well, look, the mass the, or the molecular mass of hydrogen is 1.008. You can see where I'm going with this, can't you? So he measured lithium. And lithium, if I, if I was able to measure the mass of one mole of lithium, so 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms of lithium, it adds up to exactly 6.94 grams. Well, guess what, guys? That's the same as the molecular mass. Can anybody predict how much 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles of carbon has a mass. What's the mass of that uh, one mole of carbon? Well, hopefully you would guess it's 12.011 grams because that's the number of the molecular mass. So this is the second point you need to recognise, guys. There is a relationship between the molecular mass, the one that you find in the periodic table, and one mole. And all you do is you put grams in front of it. OK, so molecular mass is 12.011. One mole of carbon has a mass of 12.11 grams. You've got to put the grams in because it's a mass. You've got to include the units.
Okay, let's, so let's add to our core concept then. So we said a mole is 6.02 times 10 to 23 atoms or molecules. We said that number is known as Avogadro's number or Avogadro's constant. And the third one we're going to add, what is a mole? A mole is the molecular mass in grams. So now you could turn to your periodic table, you could look at that larger of the two numbers in each of those tiles and you would know, either, sorry, each of those boxes and you would recognise that that's a molecular mass. If you put it in grams, you know the mass of one mole of that element. Fantastic, hey? OK, so four questions here. I suggest you pause the video and have a go. I've uh, copy pasted those details from the periodic table rather than you trying to find one. Have a go. OK, so what's the mass of one mole of boron? Well, I'm simply looking at that number on the boron uh, square um, and it's a bigger number. I'm not forgetting to put the G in. So 10.811 grams, one mole of boron, molecular mass in grams. OK, so what's the mass of one mole of hydrogen, H2? So I'm going to recognise that one mole of hydrogen will contain um, 6.02 times 10 to 23 molecules, but there's two atoms of hydrogen per uh, molecule. So I'd have to double up um, the hydrogens there. So I'd end up with 2.016 grams per mole. What's the mass of one mole of carbon dioxide? Well. The compound CO2, the relative formula mass, so the molecular mass of carbon dioxide is 44.009 and therefore one mole would be 44.009 grams. If you had rounded up those numbers, so 12 plus 16 plus 16 and got 44 grams, that would have been absolutely fine. Just be careful in an exam situation, especially with the longer calculations, it often asks you to give it to two significant figures or two decimal places. You lose marks if you don't give it to the correct decimal place or the correct significant figures, so do be careful. So the last one then, what's the mass of two moles of calcium carbonate? So, well, one molecule of calcium carbonate is 100.086 um, grams, if it's a mole, and then I'm going to multiply that by two to get 200.172 grams. OK, so the last thing for this video, the last bit, the core concept for today is the idea then that if I know the mass of 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms, I can totally figure out the mass of one atom. So I simply take the uh, atomic, the relative atomic mass, which is the AR, and I divide it by Avogadro's number. Let's give this a go. OK, that's it for today. I'll see you later.